So let us continue with the bit manipulation playlist. And before that, hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. I hope you guys are doing extremely well. So the problem that we will be solving today is Zor of numbers in a given range. So what is the problem exactly stating? It's stating that you'll be given an integer n and your task is to find the Zor of all numbers from 1 to n. Let me give you an example. Imagine I take n as 4. Okay. So what you have to do is you have to resolve from 1 till 4. And if you try to resolve from 1 to 4, what you will get is 4. I've already explained what Zor is in my previous videos. In case you are not aware of it, go back and watch it. So what is the extreme naive solution that you can think of? That is simply iterating, right? I'll be iterating from i equal to 1 till the value n. I can keep your variable answer equal to 0. What I can do is answer equal to answer zor i and right at the end of the day I can print answer and we are done. But what is the time complexity of this one? The time complexity of this one will be b go of n and the space complexity will be b go of 1. Now this is where the interviewer will not be happy and he'll ask you to optimize. How can, you, how can I optimize? Now it's not an algorithm, it's a very very simple pattern. But the thing is, if you do not know about this, you'll not be able, probably, probably you'll not be able to invent or discover this pattern in an interview. So it's good to know these things beforehand. Imagine I give you n equal to 1. So what I'm asking you to do is, find this all from 1 to 1. So that's basically 1, because 1 to 1 is 1. If I ask you to find this all from 1 to 2, that's 1's or 2, and the value is 3. If I ask you n equal to 3, that's 1s or 2s or 3, that's going to be 0. If I ask you n equal to 4, that's going to be 1s or 2s or 3s or 4, yes. So the value will be 4. If I do n equal to 5, 1s or 2s or 3s or 4s or 5, the value will be 1. If I do n equal to 6, 1s or 2s or 3s or 4s or 5s or 6, again, you can find the zone by yourself, you know it already. The value will be 7. If I do n equal to 7, it will be 1s or 2s or 3s or 4s or 5s or 6s or 7. That's going to be 0. n equal to 8. The value will be 8. For n equal to 9, the value will be 1. Do you observe a pattern? You do, right? So what I'll do is I'll erase this. Do you observe a pattern? I think you do. What I've done is, I've broken them down into blocks of 4. Blocks of 4. And something to observe is, when n is 1, when n is 5, when n is 9, right? The answer is 1, always. You'll also find for n equal to 13, the answer is 1. So, stepping 4 steps, the answer is always 1, okay? One thing I know for sure is, if n modulo 4 is equal to equal to 1, the answer will be 1. Okay. Let's look at the next pattern. If n is 2, the answer is 3. If n is 6, the answer is 7. Hmm. So if n is 10, what will be the answer? 11. Yes, the answer will be 11. You can try doing it, you'll find that the answer is 11. Okay. So the next one figured out n equal n modulo 4 equal to equal to 2. The answer will be n plus 1. This one done. What about n equal to 3? 0. 0. Very simple. n modulo 4 equal to equal to 3. The answer is always 0. Let's look at the next one. 4, 4, 8, 8. For 12, it will be 12. Super simple. So if it's a multiple of 4, the answer is n itself. And this is a pattern. Again, uh, I'll have to discover it by writing down till some numbers. So let's quickly write down the pseudocode. I'll be writing down a function that takes the value n. And if n is equal to equal to 1, I am going to return 1. Else if equal to equal to 2, I'm going to return n plus 1. I'm going to return 0 at the end 
I am going to return a bat n. So I can end the function over here. What will be the time complexity? B go of 1. What will be the space complexity? B go of 1. This is where the interviewer will be happy. But he'll ask you, ask you a follow-up question. And that is going to be, okay, you did find the ZOR from 1 to n. What if I twist the question and I give you two numbers, L and R. And I ask you, what is the ZOR from L to R? Tell me the ZOR from L to R. What I mean by that is if L is 4, R is 7, the interview is asking you 4, ZOR, 5, ZOR, 6, ZOR, 7. What is the answer of it? Again, uh, the naive solution is super simple. You basically run a for loop from i equal to l to r and you can keep an answer as 0 and you can say answer equal to answer zord of i and at the end of the day you can go ahead and print the answer. What will be the time complexity? B go of r minus l plus 1 because that is the number of times the loop will run and the space complexity will be B go of 1. Correct? But obviously the interviewer is not expecting this. He'll ask you to optimize it. How do I optimize? Now this is where I'll be using this particular function. So I know one thing for sure, this function will help me to find the ZOR from 1 to n in B go of 1. So I will try to convert this question in terms of 1 till n because I know how to find the ZOR in constant time. So what I can do is, okay, I need from 4 to 7. What if I find from 1 to 3? Can I find from 1 to 3? Array, it is same as na 1 to n. 1 till n, it is same na. Call the function. Call the function with the value 3. It will give you the saw from 1 to 3. Correct? Okay. Can I find till 7? That's from 1s or 2s or 3, 4s or 5s or 6s or 7. Can I? I'll call the function with the value 7. It will give me from 1 to 7. Correct. So if I can find two individual ZORs. After that, if I do a ZOR between these individual ZORs, what happens on the background? This 1, 1 will go off. This 2 and 2 will go off. Now when I say go off, it means same numbers. ZOR is 0. I know X, ZOR X is 0 where X is a number. I know one thing. 0 ZOR X is X where X is a number. So I can say 1 and 1, 2 will go off. 3 will also go off. And eventually, the value that you'll get will be the ZOR of 4 to 7, which is L to R. Agreed? Done. So this is what you'll do. You will call the function and ask him, hey, give me the ZOR till L minus 1. And whatever will be the value, I'll do the ZOR with R. And this eventually will be giving you the ZOR from L to R. And what will be the time complexity? The time complexity will be B go of 1. And the space complexity will also be B go of 1. I will not... Okay, I'll write down the pseudocode. So the pseudocode will be function L comma R. And you will be returning... Let's say you wrote that function as function 1. Function 1 L minus 1. Zor function 1 of R. Where function 1 is nothing but this one. Done. We go fun time complexity. I hope you've understood this. And again, uh, this pattern thing, you should be knowing beforehand. It's not that easy to figure it out in an interview. So if you're still watching and if you have understood everything, please, please do consider giving us a like. And if you're new to our channel, do consider subscribing to us as well. With this, I'll be wrapping up this video. Let's meet in some other video. Till then, bye-bye. Take care. Whenever your heart is broken.